Governance is about the people. It's a process of enablement, a creative intervention by political actors to change structures that prevent the expression of human potential. I'm talking about tokenism versus talent hunts, the US inauguration. Now, the new US President Joe Biden demonstrated the enabling power of a political actor so succinctly at his inauguration with the inclusion of Amanda Gorman and Breeding Harrington, both of them stutterers. I find their elevation into national and global limelight intriguing. During the 2020 Democratic National Convention, nine-year-old Breeding Harrington said, and I quote, kids like me are counting on you to elect someone we can all look up to, someone who will make our country and the world feel better. Everyone who had struggled and who still struggled with a stutter could identify with Breeding. And he won, Biden won. Then Braden was featured again on inauguration night, performing alongside superstars like John Legend, Justin Timberlake, and many more. Now, Braden's book is coming out this year. Tell me about the American dream. 22-year-old Amanda Gorman became the youngest in inaugural port and the sixth in a lineup that includes the legendary Maya Angelou. In her poem, The Hill We Climb, she describes our background this way. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find ourselves reciting for one. Wow. My favorite line is, but while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. Wow, a second time. Now, Gorman has three book deals with enduring financial empowerment. Tell me again about the American dream. President Biden himself overcame stuttering. He has identified with these young ones and used his influence to elevate their statuses. What an inspiration for children with speech impediments. Indeed, as John C. Maxwell says, leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. Leaders with empathy truly empower the people by providing a ladder for their dreams to come true. In other words, for me, democracy is not only about the number of votes lost or won, it's about humanizing governance. Back home here in Nigeria, our leaders have engaged more in tokenism and PR stunts than outright talent discovery promotion, and empowerment of our young ones. I remember Governor Uzodima adopted nine-year-old Joseph Okpara, a coconut hawker who sings. He uprooted him from his family when he could have put him in a music school, get him a voice coach, and grow his skills. Will such children ever make it to state events to showcase their talents? Would such talents ever be mined into an enterprise in Nigeria? Seven-year-old success at Degoy Wari protested for being sent out of school for failure to pay an illegal exam fee. The private secretary to Governor Koa met the family on behalf of the Delta State Government. And then, what far-reaching reforms have taken place in public schools since then? Is success being groomed in public speaking and advocacy? We need to go beyond tokenism. We need to truly elevate talents into reckoning, continued significance, relevance, and enterprise. As Amanda says in the last three lines of her poem, for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. If only you are brave enough to show the script to the governors. <laughs> <laughs> and by the next inauguration, you will see them, they will bring one. Uh, it will happen. One. Um, <laughs> no, well, not that what I will happen, we will know how to copy. We yes. just bring one. American did it. We need to do it that way. And you then after that, you won't hear anything. Down. You won't hear anything of that uh, small boy, <laughs> small girl again. And you know, all of this. So oh, it, it's. In, in, in President yes. Buhari's inauguration in 2015, actually, there was a poet, Titi Lai or Shunuga. And I thought that was 
interesting at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that what, what for me really, it's not this. Uh, if our public schools were good enough, you won't have to adopt a child selling coconut on the streets. True. You won't have to. Success won't have to say, oh, they will beat me tired. And then you now became a, a star. You know, a star. A star. Um, you know? So what will, I think what but I can gather from this. But you know she was taking out of public school. Somebody paid mm. for her to go mm. for yes. private and school. And then a young girl that was writing um, homework on um, a, a bank's using ATM, yeah. using nice. a bank's ATM. Nice. Like, you know, wouldn't have gone to that place to, you know. So for me, all of these are pointed to just one thing, that... The tomorrow, mm. the tomorrow, we are tomorrow can be better if only we prepare, you know, the ground for today. But unfortunately, we are not doing it. And so, um, what do you call it? APC copied the slogan and didn't live by it. <laughs> Ghanaian president copied the speech and still did, yeah, he's not imagine. living by it. That speech. So, it is not enough for us to Whoa. just to you copy. Know, copy. Let us also give these young ones who can be better than even these people you see in America right. if only they are given the opportunity. Okay, so let's come to reality and say why the government has been unable. Because we see that the bulk of our budget annually is usually for paying salaries, right? With current expenditure. And so you take success out of the school leave the school dilapidated as it has always been, and education is still at its lowest ebb. Nothing changes <laughs> because once you become a governor, what I see for most of us is to go into government house to get out of poverty or get into power so you can enreach your friends. So you are celebrated now. Also. And that's why they congratulate you because you really do not solve any problems. And to seem like you're working is to tie a few roads here and there and see success and say yeah. we are going to pay her school fees rather than fixing the education. I just want to quickly add that, you know, there's cause and there's and effect. Effects. Now, what we're talking about now is the effect of all of these things. Yeah. Now, uh, the, the course for me, and like they say, the le leadership is a reflection of the people. So the le kind of leadership we have now just reflects us as a people. Now, if we must change that, it means there must be inclusiveness. A lot of us Nigerians will sit down and analyze all the things that are not going right in the government, but would not participate. Right? Participate does not necessarily mean you have to hold elective position. It means you can start to campaign, educate people. We can keep going on and on about all the things that are not working, but this is the time to start advocating and putting those advocacy to work to ensure that we have the right people you know, ruling us in this country. The problem with our society is that the systems have all failed. They are old, they are cracky, they, are, they, are, they have messed up. In those other systems that you refer to, there are ways to catch those people we are talking about. Mm -hmm. So they identify, there are systems that will identify you that he has a music talent. There are systems that will identify someone who has some other talent mm -hmm. and nurture them accordingly. If you see the, the, the German education system, and I think the Finland, even America, all these people have evolved the system to be able to handle that. Here, we are still, the curriculum is still largely the industrial revolution of post-World War II. And it is not delivering the good. That is why somebody will fail English and math and we say it's dumb. Who says because he failed English and math is dumb? What would you do yeah. differently? So, so let me just quickly chip in that with, for braiding herring, um, the father took him to the convention. I don't know the process through which they got there. And he bonded with the president and he allowed him to you know, give a speech to... The, oh, at the so convention. he wasn't in the initial lineup? He wasn't. Oh. I don't think he was. There will still have been some security so, so clearances There, there must anyway. have been a way he, <laughs> it, it came up. Yeah. So he got a chance to speak with everyone. Biden shared his own secrets to overcoming stuttering with him. And this boy saw this as an inspiration. Come inauguration, Treasure, he what's got your there Nigerian again. Dream? What's your so Nigerian that's dream? That's the question. My, that's what we're my, advocating. My solution. Is it the solution of Nigeria? No, that's not what I mean. What I mean is restructuring. <laughs> so that each state governor is in charge of their resources and they have to come up with 
IGR. No, you say we have not changed. No, you have said this thing before now. Is it those or demands? Is it those or demands? The use of demands that you will uh, make governor and then you say you because you have the whole state. Oh my. Now. All the uh, Basakis, the Oshomoles, no all the Zemperos. I just hope that someday we will learn to copy the right things from the West instead of plagiarizing their speeches that we hardly mean. After the break, Jumoke is asking how serious our healthcare emergency really is.